What is up guys, Winter Kills here and welcome back to a brand new deck profile for DDD April 2020 ban list. And of course, we are officially in Master Rule 5, so you know what that means. This deck is basically, I want to say at full power uh, once again, and that feels really, really good to say with these cards that I'm looking at right here because it's been quite some time since that was a thing. Um, but I feel very confident in this build. Uh, it's very consistent the way I've had it put together. Um, a wide range of combos that can be done and I actually adapted the extra deck uh, to pull off a, a bit of a different combo uh, revolving formula synchron and the satellite warrior uh, combo I'm sure most of you guys if you're familiar with DDD are probably familiar with that combo um, it is a very very interesting combo um, and we'll talk about all sorts of stuff in this deck profile uh, especially when we get into the breakdown of other cards that can be played within the main deck and the extra deck and things like that so um, we're going to get started, and of course, a quick shout out to Imperium Duelist. If you guys are interested in this playmat that I'm using here, the Ultimate Brawl two sided uh, cloth playmat. Uh, does have giant hand on the other side there. Um, beautiful playmat. The artwork is fantastic. It's a crossover between some of my favorite games, obviously Yu Gi Oh! and uh, Smash Brothers. Um, really like this mat. If you guys want to get for 10% off, you can using that discount code WINNERKILLS10 off at checkout. Or if you're interested in picking up any of these sleeves, these sleeves here are not legal for tournament use, but if you want to use them for more casual play, you can 100% or put them on your collection or even play them at locals. Uh, these are some Galaxy Effect sleeves right here. They're really, really nice, but they also do sell non-effect sleeves that are perfectly legal for tournament use, like these two-toned wine on the inside, white on the back sleeves, some of the best sleeves on the market, hands down. So check them out down in the description. And also, if you're buying anything on TCG Player, do not forget to use my affiliate link to TCG Player uh, down in the description below. It does help support the channel quite a bit. So getting into the deck profile here, we have to start with three of the DD Swirl Slime, arguably one of the most important cards within the deck. I don't know where we'd be without it. Uh, three DD Necro Slime, its counterpart. Uh, then three DD Lamia. Following that, three DD Savant Kepler, of course, the Stratos of the deck. Uh, then we have three uh, DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok. Uh, two DDD Chaos King Apocalypse. Uh, two DD Savant Copernicus, two DD Ghost, and that rounds out the monsters. Um, mainly playing the two Ghosts and Chaos King Apocalypse because of the desires that we are playing within the main deck. So, moving on to the spell lineup now, of course, we have very importantly three Dark Contract with a Gate. I really hope at some point in the future this card gets a rarity bump, super rare, because it definitely deserves it. Uh, then we have three Allure of Darkness. Following that, three Pot of Desires. Uh, then following that, three where Arf Thou, because this is an incredible extender in this deck, uh, searches out some of your most important pieces like Lamia, Necro Slime, and Kepler. It's an amazing card. Uh, three Call by the Grave, because we do lose to Hand Traps. Um, you know, Ash Blossom, Droll Lockbird, Ghost Ogre, those cards do hurt us quite a bit. Can't stop Nibiru, unfortunately, but, you know, it is a what it is. Going into the rest of the spells, we have one into the Void and an Upstart Goblin. There might as well be two Upstart Goblins or into the Voids. Uh, one, one for one, and then last but not least, one Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Uh, that could be replaced with Dark Contract with the Eternal Darkness or the Valkyrie, or Dark Contract with the Witch, whatever its name is. Uh, or you could even play Foolish Burial if you wanted to. Um, yeah, now we're going to go into the extra deck. We have one DDD Wave High King Caesar and one DDD Duo Dawn King Kali Yuga. Um, the only two Ixies monsters that I'm opting to play. No number 38 here. Um, then we have our fusions, which consists of two DDD Flame King Genghis, one DDD Flame High King Genghis, uh, and then the last fusion that I'm running currently is one copy of DDD Wave Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. This card is insane. It's basically Borload uh, before Borload was Borload, so this card is amazing in here, hence the reason I'm also playing uh, the Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Then our three links, uh, the Holy Trinity of links for this extra deck, one Cross Sheep, one DDD, Abyss King, Gilgamesh. So happy this card is finally in the TCG. You just got to take a moment to let that sink in. Uh, and then, of course, the Needle Chief. My Needle Fiber still hasn't come in the mail yet because it got shipped to some place in Massachusetts, which is not where I'm from. So uh, who knows if I'll get that anytime soon. Uh, and then we have one Formula Synchron, one DDD Gus King Alexander, one DDD Curse King Siegfried, one Borlode Sessus Savage Dragon, one Cr -cr -cr Crystal Wing Synchro Dragon, and one Sessus Satellite Warrior uh, to round out the Synchros and, of course, round out the extra deck. So, as per usual, that rounds out the basic profile. Now we're going to take an in depth look at all the cards in the deck and what their role is. All right, so here we have, of course, our starter cards for the deck. Now, before we go any further, I want to mention that anywhere between 11 and 14 starter cards are pretty good for a standard deck. 
And starter cards, what are they? Well, they're cards that simply allow us to get our engine going and have easy activation requirements. Now, of course, with all card roles, some cards can serve multiple roles. I do want to make honorable mentions to sort of these uh, seven cards here, Desires, Where Art Thou, and Into the Void. These cards could potentially also all be considered starter cards, more so Desires and Into the Void, because they do allow us to see more cards, and they have fairly easy act activation requirements. So those could be considered starter cards, but also could be considered extenders. Uh, really just depends on what the scenario is. But of course, starting with the Swirl Slime here, um, this card basically is the lifeblood of the deck. Um, at least in some ways, uh, this deck really does rely heavily, heavily around fusion summoning, and this is a card that basically allows you to do just that, especially from hand, not needing a fusion spell, which really is what makes this deck unique at the end of the day. It does perform a lot of fusion summons without requiring any spells, and Swirl Slime is no exception. This card is absolutely fantastic. Allows you to fuse for a DDD from your hand. Um... It allows you to banish itself from Grave to summon a DD from your hand as well. And then next up here we have DD Savant Kepler. This card is absolutely amazing because it searches out our contracts. Uh, and it also does that on normal or special summon. So if you get this card off of the Swirl Slime, you can still use this effect to go ahead and grab a card like this, which will allow you to keep searching and keep comboing. It also can allow you to target another DD card you control and bounce it back to your hand, but that effect doesn't really come up too often. Then we have three Dark Contract with the Gate. While it does burn you for a thousand during each of your standby phases, it basically does allow you to search your deck for any DD monster uh, basically once per turn. Um, and this card really does help keep you, uh, you know, very consistent and with getting the right cards you need to your hand to start your plays. Cards like Swirl Slime, cards like Necro Slime or Lamia. Absolutely incredible card all around that we want to max out on. It's just a great searcher for the deck. The next up here we have Allure of Darkness. This card, of course, is a no-brainer. It's very easy to activate, especially with all the monsters in our main deck being dark monsters. It does allow us to see more cards and hopefully more essential combo pieces. So, got to talk about the Allure of Darkness there. Same thing could be said for the Pot of Desires. Also, we don't need any sort of specific card in our hand to be able to use this. We can just play it, banish 10, and draw 2 and see if we can get into the right cards we need. Next up here is a copy of One for One. This card, again, uh, it, it is a great starter card because not only does it provide us a discard outlet for some important cards that we might want in our grave, cards like Necro Slime or Lamia, but it does help get out some of the more important cards within our deck. Cards like Kepler, which then can get us our Dark Contract, or cards like Lamia and Necro Slime onto the board, which are both level 1s. Uh, that we can use to sort of combo off with cards like Where Arf Thou, um, or link them off, get them into the graveyard, and continue to play from there. So one for one, absolutely great, mainly because it can get Kepler, which gets us contract. So a fourth copy of the Kepler, if you will. Then last but not least, one dark contract with the Swamp King. I feel like this card is so underrated. Um, it's basically a pseudo swirl slime, if need be. It can allow you to fusion, basically. Uh, for a DD fusion monster, basically you can banish, uh, you know, from your grave or use monsters from your hand or field um, to fusion. So if in some cases, when you don't have access to Swirl Slime um, and you kind of have to pick between, you know, going for Swirl or going for this off of uh, your Kepler, um, sometimes going for this is the right play. And later in the game, this card can also come in clutch to summon some of your bigger uh, DDD fusion monsters that Swirl Slime itself cannot summon. Um... So yeah, those are the cards that I've selected as starter cards. Again, you could also list cards like Pot of Desires as starter cards, Where Arf Thou as starter cards, or even Into the Void, because cards that are very easy to activate uh, and mainly just get us into the cards that we need uh, to start our engine, uh, allow us to start fusion summoning, allow us to start comboing off. So that is it for the starter cards. Uh, if you have any questions, again, feel free to leave them down in the comments below. We're going to move on to the Superior Extenders. So here we have laid out in front of us our Superior Extenders. And what are Superior Extenders exactly? They are basically cards that help add on to the plays that our starter cards are able to start for us. Um, sometimes they do have a bit harder of an activation requirement to meet, a little bit harder to set up overall, but do add to the overall power level of our plays, and it is important to have a decent amount of these. Uh, but not too many, of course. Um, but yeah, basically DD Swirl Slime making onto the, you know, the stage here once again. Now this card 100% is a starter card, much like Desires can be a starter card, but they can also serve uh, between multiple different roles. And the reason why Swirl Slime is a superior extender, it can at least be classified as one in some aspect, is because it's graveyard effect where it can banish itself from the grave to summon a DD monster from your hand. 
Um, that play uh, is really great, and a lot of you know some key combos are going to use that effect a lot. Um, but is you know it does need, of course, to be in the graveyard first, and you're only getting it there, of course, if you're fusion summoning with Swirl Slime, you know, from your hand, getting itself and another card to the graveyard. Or using a card like Copernicus or Foolish Burial, whatever it may be, to get this card to the grave to be able to use and activate that effect. So, of course, in that sense, can be activated as a superior extender. And then Necro Slime is basically Swirl Slime, but uses itself from a grave and has to banish itself in another DD uh, monster uh, for the fusion summon of a DD fusion monster, a DDD fusion monster. Um, of course, this card does have to be set up in the grave already. It doesn't do anything on the field or hand, so it does require a bit of a setup to get it to the graveyard in order to take advantage of its effect. So that's why I'm hence labeling it as a superior extender. Pot of Desires, of course, this card could be a starter card. It's very easy to activate at uh, basically no cost to you. No, you know, set cards need to be on your field or in your hand. Uh, you just need to have, of course, enough cards in the deck to be able to activate and resolve it. Uh, because it does allow you to see into more cards, potentially more chances at seeing more engine pieces, uh, but it could also be activated as a superior extender. Because with this deck, there's some ordering with how you want to use your draw spells, especially a card like Pot of Desires. If you can help it, getting cards like Swirl Slime, Necro Slime, and Lamia out of the deck as soon as possible before resolving the Pot of Desires is key, so that is why I'm hence labeling it as a superior extender in this particular video. Next up, we have, of course, Where Arf Thou. This is a card I've been always playing at 2 in here, but decided to bump it up to 3 because, well, this card isn't a once per turn, and it just allows you to search outright some of the best cards in your deck, Necro Slime, Lamia, and Kepler, some of your amazing, most amazing cards in this deck, and always going to be, like, the best cards to have in your hand that start off some of the best combos this deck is capable of. Um, and sometimes normal summoning Necro Slime to grab Lamia and then playing a contract to grab Swirl Slime is just oftentimes the way to go. Um, and the, the 2,000 life point payoff at the end of the turn uh, is, you know, not the biggest deal at the end of the day. Um, mainly just playing three because uh, we want to see it as soon as possible. We're also playing Desires. We're playing a lot of three of us in the deck, as you'll see. Uh, but this is just increasing that consistency, increasing the odds of being able to get ourselves consistently the key combo pieces that we need. And of course, this does require a level 1 to be on the board. And oftentimes, that means we have committed our normal summon in some way, shape, or form. So, where our thou could uh, be classified as a superior extender, getting us additional cards through our hand to work with, or it could also be considered a starter in some aspects. Even if that means you're normal summoning a card like Necro Slime and then playing the where our thou to grab Lamia or Kepler, whatever it may be. So, that is it for the superior extenders. Now, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the additional extenders. All right, so before we get quite into the additional extenders, I do want to mention that this card right here, DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok, could also be considered a superior extender in some cases because of his scale effect. When played in the scale, if a DD monster is special summoned, uh, you can basically special summon a DD from your grave by taking a thousand damage and your opponent takes half battle damage. So this card in its own right could be considered a superior extender as well. But for the sake of this video, I'm going to go ahead and label it as an additional extender based on the main sequencing of the combos within this particular build and oftentimes how you want to activate and resolve and more importantly when you'll want to activate and resolve his effect although in some other hands and combos uh, he can play a bit of a different role as in being you know a superior extender and things like that so of course here for our additional extenders these cards are basically cards that add on even more to the power level of our plays but oftentimes are a bit harder to set up a bit harder to meet the activation requirements for um, thus you know we want to play a bit fewer of them but again um, this looks like a larger amount of you know additional extenders than we should have which you know technically is but a lot of these cards um, are you know can cross between roles uh, between starter superior extender and things like that so it really does add to the overall versatility of our deck here um, just because a card is in a certain category doesn't mean it can't also be in another category as well. That's something we kind of want uh, to have a more versatile deck, as I had mentioned before. Uh, so 3 Abyss King Ragnarok, uh, not only does it have a really good scale effect, but if it is special or normal summoned, uh, you can basically revive a DDD from your grave. Um, which is great, and it can also tribute a DD monster uh, to basically target a monster your opponent controls and banish it. So it does have a nice bit of removal there, uh, so can't forget that. Then we have two Chaos King Apocalypse, and I guess I really should pair that together with the DD Ghost. Um, these two cards I'm being played uh, are being played at multiples on my particular build because of Pot of Desires. Uh, these two cards are your go-to scaling targets off of Gilgamesh. So uh, you know, playing. 
uh, more Chaos King Apocalypse is important. I used to play one, but I bumped up to two, especially since now that I'm playing three Desires. So I don't want to have to worry about banishing the only copy I have off Desires. Because uh, then I, I'm missing out on a really good extender off Gilgamesh. Um, and always playing three Ragnarok, because not only is it just good for that Gilgamesh scaling effect, it's just good in its own right to see in any given hand. Uh, especially if you can't pull off a full combo, this card can help you do some other things, complete rank eights like Kaliuga, which is an outright fantastic card. So really good to have this card. Uh, then we have 2DD Ghost. Um, same thing can be said. Playing multiples because of the Needle Fiber package. This is your main summon target off of Needle Fiber. Uh, if you can help it, and of course playing multiples does decrease the chance of having them both be banished off of Desires. But uh, Chaos King Apocalypse, uh, when it's in the scale, you can basically banish two DD monsters from your graveyard to special summon it from the Pendulum Zone. Um, that's a key effect for this deck, but again, it does have to be in the zone. You do need to have the proper targets in Grave to be able to summon it. It's oftentimes one of the last plays you'll be doing in a combo sequence, so I would definitely label it as an additional extender. But is a great card because it's a level 7, and it combined with Lamia can help make Siegfried, so... Great card all around. DD Ghost, again, like I said, it is the main Needle Fiber target uh, to summon from the deck, but once it hits the graveyard, you can basically target a DD, con uh, DD or Dark Contract in your grave, and then send that card, uh, that card you targeted, with that same name uh, from your deck to your grave. So if it hits the grave and there's a Lamia in grave, you can send another Lamia, um, or you can send another Swirl Slime or Copernicus, whatever it may be, which is nice because it helps load up your graveyard with a little extra cards to work with for uh, Necro Slime plays or Chaos King Apocalypse plays giving you that extra bit of fodder to work with so you don't have to banish key cards like your Gilgamesh, your Ganguses, and things like that. So Ghost is incredible for that. Not only does Ghost do that, but of course, uh, if it is banished, you can basically return, I believe it is one of your banished DD or Dark Contract uh, you know, cards back to your graveyard. So it is great for recurring resources, again, to make cards like Chaos King Apocalypse live, uh, to keep certain targets you need in the graveyard at certain points when you're summoning things out. Uh, it is great for recycling things. Uh, Savant Copernicus. This card uh, could could be considered a starter card, could be considered a superior extender, uh, could be considered an additional extender. Uh, it, it really is a very, very versatile card within a deck. I am playing two because um, it is it can be a normal summon. I didn't want to play so many normal summons, especially with the three Kepler and the two Copernicus. I think five is a fine number to be at. Uh, especially since we can get such easy access to Kepler. Um, but this card is great to be summoned off sometimes, off of your Swirl Slime to get an additional card to the graveyard. Um, but oftentimes, really doesn't come up in the main combo unless the rest of your hand is really good. Like if you already have like Swirl Slime, Lamy and other DD engrave are in your hand, then you can normal this to dump Necro Slime and then Fusion and then, you know, combo off of this card. Um, so it really does depend on the type of hand of how important the Copernicus will be. But nonetheless, still can be a starter card, can be a superior extender, um, can be a whole lot of things. Uh, so really don't pay too much attention to about where this card lies. Like I said, it's a very versatile card for the deck. Um, wouldn't play three, like I said, just because I don't want to play too many normal summons, but nonetheless, uh, still a fantastic card. And then DD Lamia. Um, arguably one of the most important cards in the deck. Not only do you need fusion plays in this deck, but you need tuners, because making synchros and making needle fiber is very, very important for this deck strategy, at least currently. Um, but basically, if it's in your hand or graveyard, you can send a DD or Dark Contract card from your hand or face up field to the graveyard, except itself to special summon this card, uh, but banish it when it leaves the field. So, uh, you do a lot of juggling sometimes with this card by summoning it not using its own effect, whether it be off of this card, Genghis, uh, Gal Alexander, whatever it may be, you can use it, you juggle this card around and synchro with it and link with it uh, before you actually go to use its final effect. Um, and that's mainly why I'm labeling it as an additional extender because using its actual effect, uh, you know, to send off a card uh, to the graveyard to be able to bring it back, especially when in regards to the, the combo sequencing with this deck, usually happens a bit later on. Uh, usually you don't want to do until you have some more pieces in play. Um, using this card early on isn't always the greatest idea because it means you're going to lose the key extender in your graveyard very fast since it will, of course, get banished after it leaves the field once you use that effect. So that is it for the additional extenders. And again, a lot of those cards there could be labeled as starter cards uh, or superior extenders. It really just depends, um, you know, basically who you're talking to or, uh, you know, what part of the combo they sort of come up in. Uh, so now we're going to go talk about uh, defense and removal and things like that. All right, so here we have our main cards that could be considered defensive and or removal cards or re-raise ceiling cards. Obviously, we know what Ragnarok does uh, for its, you know, extension matters, but like we talked about earlier, it does have that key effect where you can basically tribute a DD monster and target a monster your opponent controls and banishes. Of course, we already talked about that, but that does add to this deck's, uh, you know, built-in removal, essentially. Uh, we do have some more removal, of course, in the extra deck, but it is nice to have a searchable main deck target as well. 
Uh, then we have Chaos King Apocalypse. Uh, this card does have a very niche monster effect. It says, during your opponent's turn, if this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can target two face-up spell and trap cards you control. You cannot special summon monsters the rest of the turn, except bean type monsters. Also destroy the targeted cards if you do special summon this card. This is a quick effect. So, um, this card can basically revive itself from your hand or grave. If you are being attacked directly, possibly could be going for a game, you can summon this guy out to block damage last minute, which I've actually used that effect for. Um, so a bit of defense there uh, can act as sort of a hand trap or, you know, a graveyard, uh, you know, a fact that you can sort of spring upon your opponent at the, uh, you know, when they least expect it. Um, this sort of block damage and buy you another turn. So of course I uh, wanted to talk about it there for that niche monster effect uh, Three call by the grave. Like I said, this deck can be hindered greatly by hand traps uh, You know droll Lockbird, ash blossom uh, Cards that are trying to lower our ceiling. So these cards help to raise our ceiling um, You know re-raise them from you know floodgates and things like that our opponent are trying to push upon us um, So, you know seeing this card pushing through hand traps allowing us to play even further allowing us to do our combo um, is really beneficial to have this card. You do not need to play these. You can play Impermanence, Foolish Burial, Ash Blossom, uh, whatever. Um, if you're worried about losing Die Roll or things like that, but I, I really do like having the three Call by the Grave. And not only that, this card is extremely versatile too, because not only can it, uh, you know, basically allow you to push through hand trap boards, um, but basically can be set and used as an, an additional interruption, um, to slow your opponent down, uh, during their turn. And then the last two cards I want to talk about, Usually this is the only card that sort of goes in this placeholder category, a card that basically exists to lower the deck count below 40 and does nothing else. But basically, you could consider Into the Void uh, that sort of same thing. If you see this card, you're just activating it, draw another card deeper into the deck. Same thing with Upstart. Again, these cards could be considered, uh, you know, extenders uh, if you see them, but mainly just placeholder cards. They're just one-offs in the deck. Uh, you play them, you draw a card, lowering our deck count essentially to 38. Uh, so yeah, that's why I'm playing them in a deck like this. Very important to see our combo pieces as soon as possible uh, and be as consistent as possible uh, because, you know, that will allow us to pull off our combo more regularly. So we'll go through the extra deck real quick to talk about some explanations for card choices. Of course, we have DD Wave High King Caesar and DDD Duo Dawn King Calyuga. These guys' names are an absolute mouthful, but um, the reason why I do like Calyuga uh, in here, uh, as opposed to playing any other rank 8, is because this card, uh, while a lot of the cards in this deck exist solely as extenders, um, once you go through your first turn combo, if that does get broken in any way, shape, or form, or if you don't be able to, you know, assemble game with that board, um, a lot of the extra deck is sort of used up, and you're left with very little to give you more aggressive pushing power, and Duo Dawn King Calyuga is the card just to do that. Now, Wave High King Caesar doesn't come up in a lot of combos, but it does come up nonetheless using two Ganguses to make this card. Um, it can be an outright game-winning card in certain matchups, specifically, specifically because its effect, which states that when a spell trap card or monster effect is activated, that includes the fact that special summons a monster. Quick effect, you can detach material from this card, negate the activation if you destroy that card, then you can make one other DD monster you control, and this card gain 1800 attack until the end of this turn. If this card is sent from the field of the graveyard, you can add a dark contract from your deck to your hand. Um, so this card, uh, really, really good against certain specific matchups. Um, that's why I wanted to have it within the extra deck. You're not always going to go for it uh, with your main combo. You can. Um, there are some combos that allow you to do that, but uh, I just would rather have them there as the option because these are a fantastic card to have in the extra deck. And of course, I've already given my reasoning behind the Kali Yuga. Uh, now we're taking a look at our synchros here. Of course, Formula Synchron, our main summon target, our only summon target off of Needle Fiber. Now, I was playing the Shooting Riser Dragon before because uh, that is a part of a bit of a different combo. Um, but uh, I've since learned to like a different combo instead of that one, uh, one that ends on a bit of better uh, of a board, uh, a little easier to pull off, a little bit more consistent. Um, and there's technically still a way to fit both of those combos into this deck. And that is simply to replace the big uh, Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok with the Shooting Riser Dragon. Um, but again, this card could be played in here. I'm currently playing the formula for now. Again, the uh, Shooting Riser is another viable option. Uh, then we have the Gus King Alexander. Basically, he can special summon a level 4 or lower DD monster when a DD monster is normal or special summoned. Uh, so it can get really a lot of your lower level extenders out of the graveyard. Cards like uh, Copernicus, mainly Lamiak, but can also get Necro and Swirl Slime out of the grave as well. Uh, then we have Siegfried. we got to end on some form of interaction. Siegfried is the card to do that. Uh, same thing with Borlode Savage Dragon. Oftentimes, you don't make this card on your turn because you're under the restriction of Gilgamesh, which locks you into DDDs only. 
uh, for the remainder of the turn. Uh, but Savage Dragon can be made on the opponent's turn with cards like Synchron uh, and Genghis, and then equipping Gilgamesh to, the, uh, you know, to it from the grave. Uh, Crystal Wing, uh, this card has been a staple in this deck since day one. can be made very easily with Gal Alexander and any level one tuner. Um, outright amazing card and then the satellite warrior this is basically uh for the the combo that can be done with this deck just opening kepler um you know and any uh whether it be kepler uh swirl slime and necro slime or kepler necro slime and lamia or any of those combinations um this card can be made and basically can essentially pop two to three cards during the opponent's turn uh not necessary to play within the deck uh you could play other cards if you didn't want to play that combo um, but I really am, you know, drawn to that combo as of lately, so I'm opting to play it. I don't have a copy yet. It should be here soon. Uh, one Gilgamesh, uh, Cross Sheep, and Needle Fiber. Only three links within this deck, uh, but these links really do help us do quite a bit. Gilgamesh is insane. It can place up to two scales or place two uh, DD cards to our scales by paying a thousand one li once Link summoned. Um, but once we use that effect, we're locked into DDDs for the rest of the turn. Uh, but you know with the right sequencing uh, we can get like a crystal wing or you know other DD non DD monsters on the board before we use that effect Cross sheep is amazing in here. It can be triggered by any of our fusions uh, and revive more extenders out of the grave like Lamia, Necro Slime, Swirl Slime, Copernicus uh, and just keep combing from there. Needle Fiber is great because it does tutor out not only just random, you know, generic tuners like uh, Formula, or not Formula, uh, or Jet Synchron or Glow Bulb if that was still legal, but it actually tutors out our engine pieces, which makes it so, so very nice to have in this deck. Uh, then we have the DDD Wave Oblivion King Caesar Ragnarok. The main reason I'm playing this guy is because. Uh, going back to what I was saying earlier about Kali Yuga is just having a turn three or five uh, card that you can basically get out and try to continue to push uh, after that initial first turn play and try to you know assemble a game uh, with other cards. So I really do like having this as a backup. I didn't want to have too many cards in the extra deck that solely existed as just extenders because this deck already has a bit too many of those. Then we have one Flame High King Genghis, uh, a main extender in the deck. Same thing with the regular Flame King Genghis's uh, also an incredible extender as well. Uh, if a DD is special summoned while it's on the field, you can special summon another DD from your grave. Uh, basically, really, really good card. Uh, yeah, so that is it for the extra deck. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the side deck. I'll put up a mock side deck up on the board. All right, so looking through the main deck here, some cards that could be sided out are a third Desires, the third where Arf Thou. Uh, so, I mean, Desires is something I wouldn't normally side out, but since we are playing three copies, uh, we could easily spare one of those going into games two or three. Um, we could also look to side out a card like Into the Void. Um, even a card like Ragnarok could also go. This is a very combo oriented deck, so finding some side deck space within the main deck can be a little tough. Um, you could also look to side out, if need be, one Chaos King Apocalypse and one Ghost. Uh, you could also side out the Dark Contract with a Swamp or even uh, Allure. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's really about it. I should have a, a side deck up, up on the screen here, uh, a sort of an example side deck that I would use for a deck like this. But, you know, anywhere from six to eight slots, uh, I feel like is a good number to have within the main deck to have, you know, be able to be swapped out um, against certain decks. Gonna, of course, want a lot of going second cards to have in this deck since it is a going first strategy. Cards like Dark Ruler, Nibiru, Twin Twist are evenly matched, things like that. Things that'll help us push through boards if we do have to go second. So yeah, that is gonna do it for this updated DD deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like if you did. Uh, don't forget to check out Imperium and my link to TCG Player down in the description below. And consider hitting that join button also if you wanna become a member of the channel. But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. As always, when I kill, signing out. We'll see you in the next one.